Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. This is the Melitopol, the key city to get our access to Crimea. If we take this one, we're gonna block the Russian supplies from Crimean Peninsula. That is why it's very important and we continue to use the artillery systems. As you can see, today we targeted many of the Russian barracks in the city itself and around it. And Russian media continue to say that Ukraine uses the HIMARS rocket artillery systems against the residential areas and civilian objects. It's their normal rhetorics, but we targeted, yes, it was the hotel and some sort of the base. It was outside the city in the city suburbs, but it was used by the Russian to put their soldiers there. Plus today there were numerous reports of the explosions in Crimea itself. So in Sephiropol, the central part, Sevastopol, Saki, the Saki airfield, just to remind you, was destroyed at the end of the summertime and it was the huge success for Ukraine. And I monitored the Russian groups and they say that there are some explosions all over Crimea. And here are the bad news, especially for Odessa region, because of the yesterday's attack Russia used again the Shahid drones that attack the critical infrastructure and now there is no any electricity in Odessa city and Odessa region. And the forecast to renew the infrastructure for Odessa is very bad so I guess many days people will spend without any kind of power. Those are the Russian armor helmets uh, that they were provided with. Warning, this is the toy, do not use this, uh, this helmet as ballistic protection. So I guess they were delivered with the airsoft equipment or something like that. This video shows the behavior of the average pro-Putin Russian. So those are German journalists. They are in Moscow and you can see police cars behind and they are uh, providing the world with some kind of information from the Russia. Aeroflot, by the way, the administrative building is behind the journalists. So probably, I, I don't know what they were speaking about, but I will let you see. Dass er in Freiheit ist. Christoph, dann lass uns noch einmal. Wir haben hier Putin. einen Mann, der uns Germany. etwas stört. Fuck you, ja. Germany. <lacht> der beruhigt sich schon wieder. Also. Fuck you. Ja. Ja. Ja, Wir ja. belegen. Dieser Mann hat uns gerade als äh, deutsche Faschisten beschimpft. Ja, aber das müssen wir kurz übersetzen. Entschuldige bitte. Der kam jetzt hier vorbei, hat äh, uns als deutsche Faschisten beschimpft und hat auch noch unflätig sich dann gegenüber Amerika geäußert. Wir haben das gerade gehört. Aber ich muss sagen. So finally, uh, one of the police officers came and he just, he just told uh, this guy wasn't arrested. They, he just was told, okay get rid of the journalists and go home <laughs> that is what the russian media is doing they put this propaganda they put pure hatred towards the western country so it's not only against ukraine it's against uh, as you see germany america and other allies of ukraine in general russian propaganda doesn't say that they fight against ukraine they say that they fight against nato and united states they are the greatest enemy of the russian world and america influences uh, zelensky so zelensky is the puppet the main thing is uh, what biden says what biden does not zelensky the story of ukrainian traders so here you can see uh, the young guy removes uh, the Ukrainian symbol from the building in Kupensk and after the Kupensk was liberated the guy went to the Russian Federation and he decided to go to the Russian army or maybe he was just mobilized and he became the soldier and afterwards uh, he just lost his life in Ukraine so here is his fight for the deaths. Poland is looking to put their new Korean-made K2 tanks near to border with Kaliningrad, which is the part of the Russian Federation for now. I'm unaware of the tactical characteristics of the K2 tank. The name K2 is awesome and they look like Leopard 2 tanks just a little bit. At least the turret looks very similar. And here we have the CCTV camera of the private household that recorded the explosion in Sevastopol, near to Sevastopol. So it was the big one. I wonder if it was some sort of the drone or air defense in action, or maybe drone went somewhere destroying something. So far we are unaware. 
And as for the Russian military objects, we already know everything that they have over there. We have satellites, we have all the reports about their ships, aviation and everything. So, so if we'll have the resource to deliver something there, of course, we will use it. And the main hub base for the Russian army is Jankoy over here. This is the main crossroad uh, for the railroads, for the simple road connection. They have airfield there, so they use helicopters, they use uh, tactical bombers over there and attack airplanes as Su-25. It's not far away from the front lines and still it's not reachable by the Ukrainian rocket artillery systems. If we would have attack AMS, obviously it would be awesome for Ukraine to get that airfield attacked by those rockets. As for Saki, somehow we got that airfield and I think we used Harpoon rockets for that one because it's very near uh, to the sea. It's actually on the sea surface a level and I guess it was the same as targeting the big ship to target that airfield. For Jankoy it's more complicated. That video I published today on my Telegram channel, this is the Russian attack airplane Su-25. They've got some problems with the landing gear, simply with extension of that one. And basically they made the belly landing on their airfield. Everyone was okay, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, the airplane is very robust, uh, Soviet made. They go very low over their runway threshold, you can see the Z. So for sure it's the Russian one. We also have those airplanes in our air forces, but A-10 is much better, much better. This one I think is faster, but A-10 can carry more weaponry, more sophisticated, even though it's very old. But I think this one also might be restored for the second use. No problem with that. Uh, basically they need to they do not need lots of repairs to put it and fight again in Ukraine, unfortunately. Azerbaijan helps a lot. They provided Ukraine with those uh, systems to repair our energy infrastructure. So thank you guys uh, from Azerbaijan for helping Ukraine. And this is the video of the Russian Sober Special Forces being just destroyed in attempt to cross the Irpin bridge. The Irpin bridge is over there. It's the K uh, route to reach Kiev actually. And they were on their column way just to the Kiev city. It happened on 25th of February this year, but the video was published just today. And here we see that the column was just demolished and uh, Sober, I guess from Sober Special Forces, they didn't know that Ukraine will withstand uh, the attack from the Russian side and all of them just were demolished over there. Crazy Russian Putinists put uh, that some sort of the Sarmat rocket, a nuclear one, on uh, their car on Lada and went not on Washington as they say on, on Washington they put on the rocket but they went from Kazan uh, to Moscow on that stupid car uh, so just imagine what's inside the head of those zombies. So before we were making a fan of the Ruskies with those balalaika, vodka, ushanka, but definitely now they present the ideological threat to the normal world, my friends. That's inside their heads to bomb or nuke Washington and normal societies. They want to move their balalaika, vodka everywhere. And they call it the Russian peace. Controversial information about Tumso Abdurrahmanov, who was said to be killed recently. But today the head of the Ichkeria parliament, uh, the parliament that was evacuated from Chechnya Republic after Russian uh, forces went there. So he said that Tumso Abdurrahmanov is safe and under protection by the Sweden police, but Sweden police uh, doesn't say anything. So it could be the good news for the influencers, for the bloggers, uh, that this guy is okay. That's Ukraine today, elderly guy with a sterling on his bike, probably he delivers it somewhere and actually I got two of those units of antennas of the Starling. One I got with me upon my travel and one I left in Ukraine uh, for one of my friends who is the blogger 
and I think he needs it a lot because with all of those blackouts at least he may have some kind of internet and I constantly use my Starling over here because the local internet connection is very poor and I'm thinking to move further to other accommodation. As for the maps there was no tactical map update just this one and what can I say that Russians uh, took the small village it's Novoselovsky over here so they attacked it uh, before they took part of that one and today finally they got control over this village and they pushed Ukrainian forces uh, further from the road but it will not change the situation for them over here we are waiting for the new weaponry and winter equipment to be installed fully for our army and after that we're gonna obviously start one more counter-attack i predict that it's gonna be here in melitopol and today the russian base was attacked there by the Heimer's rocket artillery systems so i have pretty much good idea of what might happen this winter and i have uh, huge expectations for the winter campaign my friends, I'm going to keep you updated on situation in Ukraine. If you want to support my channel, just press the like to it. It helps me a lot. If you want to support me financially, there are some links in the video description just below. You may support my Patreon, a PayPal or the Nutella, whichever is more convenient for you. My friends, thank you for your help. And as always, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.